Daddy Show. Step up. It's time for the main event. <laughs> Hey, hey, what is up? Welcome back to the program, folks. Thank you for tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tom Clark, and this right here is Tom Clark's main event. What's up, kids? I still don't have the timing down. You notice how I go really, really fast now? Because I don't have the timing down. Work with me. We'll get there. We'll all get there together. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the show. Happy Friday to you. Hope everybody out there is doing well. Hope you've had a great week. This is episode number 302. We are two weeks removed from the 300th anniversary celebration of the main event. You're looking at the man. You're looking at the kingpin of the podcast here on Facebook. Come at me. Okay? The godfather of the of the podcast on the Facebook. I shouldn't say that. Chris Featherstone beat me to it. Chris was live on the Facebook before I was. So Chris is the godfather. But I am his consigliere. That's what I am. I'm his top lieutenant. Believe that. Okay? So everybody needs to, like, pay their dues, man. Pay their tolls. To me. I need to get a light in here. Because I have some bright overhead lights, but it's not doing much for me here. Um, As you can see. Um, I'm a little pale. To be fair, though, I'm pale pretty much all the time. Pasty's what they call me. Let's get to the comments. Josh, what's going on, my friend? Good to see you. Sandy and Jeremy, good and talk to you. Chad, too bad in the house. Ray all day, how are you doing? St. Patty's Day is here upon us, and Sandy and Jeremy's wishing a good one. Happy St. Patty's Day to you, my friend. Rebecca, what's going on? Sugar Shane, doing well. How are you, my friend? Carlos, what's going on, dude? Uh, Ron's doing my work for me. You see that? I should pay the man. Everybody, please hit the thumbs up and share the feed. Ron asked you, why aren't you doing it? Do that for me, kids. E, what's going on? Hey, man, uh, he's in uh, Denver this week. What's going on, dude? Eric Jackson, where are you? There you are. Uh, Jamel in Vegas, what's going on? He said today is mom's birthday, still in the hospital. Uh, dude, I, I'm glad to hear she's coming home. That's awesome, dude. Congratulations for that. It's kind of a weird word to say, but I'm, I mean, be grateful. I know you are. Be thankful. I know you are. So that's pretty cool. Jeff says, fun night to Winnipeg AW Dynamite show. Have a feeling they'll be back. Crowd was absolutely lit. Um, we're going to talk about it. There's some stuff I got to vent on here today. Uh, let's see. Jumping Jeff Sharma is here for a bit. Robbie, what's going on? Keith, good to see you. We have said hello to everyone here. Uh, again, everybody, please, if you will, smash the devil out of that like button and share this feed everywhere you can. I would very much appreciate it. I feel like I got to lower my desk just a bit. I've got one of those desks that's, uh, they do magic. Hear that? Huh? Hey man, we're first class here. We spare no expense. Can you see <laughs> the digitized background? Because Tom doesn't have a green screen behind him. We spare no expense here on the main event. Believe that. Ray, my kid's good. He's actually at, uh, hanging out at the office today, or at least for the next uh, while we do the show for the next hour. And then he's going to go with me. I'm picking up my niece and nephew for the weekend. So I got to pick them up. I've got a heart out in an hour, kids. So yeah. It'll be fun. Can you change your background to WrestleMania? No, Sandy. Hey, look, as it gets closer, maybe we'll do that. I, listen, it's all good, man. It's all good. As it gets closer, maybe we will. I just like this background. First off, I was actually there. And second, the colors, I dig the colors. You know what I mean? I'm just, I'm a fan of this background. I'm not above, I'm not, a, be, I'm not above changing it. I could change it for sure. All right, we've got to, uh, he says, change your background to pictures to me. Okay. 
Uh, we got some stuff to talk about. I had to vent just a bit as we kick off the show. Nothing bad. Nothing on anybody here. I love you guys. You're my audience. I got a few things to say, a few things to get off my chest. I've had all I can stands, and I can't stands no more. MJF, the outcast, and that's the trio of ladies, Soraya, um, Tony Storm, Ruby Soho uh, are the outcast, and AEW's routine. There's been other guys talking about this this week, and they can go with God, brother. It's totally fine, but I got a few things I got to get off my chest about this. I have made comparisons, uh, maybe not comparisons. I've pointed out many, many times on my show in the past, in my humble opinion, how I believe how I believe a company should portray its championships and portray its roster. Um, I binge some, uh, I've been binging some old school Jim Crockett lately. Um, I actually uh, checked out for everybody that was asking about the uh, tales from the territories. Um, the Crockett episode uh, was kind of a letdown because they tried to cover a whole lot and missed a whole lot in an hour. Didn't cover. I mean, they barely, barely scraped the surface. You want to make a movie about something? I get why they're making the Von Erich pick. I get it. But, dude, Crockett needs its own movie, in my opinion. I don't know if anybody would ever want to go that far, but Rick Flair would be a selling point, if nothing else. Rick and Dusty, at least. But um, I have made, I have, I have pointed out many, many times on the show here before and on other shows as I've been invited that. One of the great things about Jim Crockett promotions, and everybody, if you've never seen it, hear me out. If you have seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about. One of the great things about Jim Crockett promotions back in the day was that Jim Crockett promotions was the best pro wrestling in the world. Do you want to know how I know? Because they told you. Okay? The National Wrestling Alliance was the greatest collection of of talents in the world, and that if you were good enough to get into the NWA, that meant that you were a cut above everyone else. That meant that you were a star. That meant that you had what it took to work uh, and wrestle on the next level. Do you want to know how I know that? Because they told me that. Back in the day, the NWA World Heavyweight Championship was the premier title in the entire wrestling industry, bar none. Every other championship that claimed to be a world title was a phony, was a pretender to the throne, was not real, and the guy holding it was a paper champion. Do you want to know how I know? Because they told me. There's a point here. I believed all these things because I truly felt that those things were true, that they were right. If you grew up with the WWE as your promotion, as your pro wrestling, maybe you never believed that about Jim Crockett promotions. Uh, If you grew up with uh, the AWA as your promotion in the greater Minnesota area, uh, maybe you never felt the NWA and Jim Crockett Promotions was the best wrestling on, in the world. If you grew up in Japan and you were a massive fan of Japanese-based wrestling, maybe you never believed that Jim Crockett Promotions was the best wrestling in the world. Am I biased? Yes. Do I believe that Jim Crockett Promotions to this day has some of the best wrestling, best storylines, uh, had, the, had the best houses, the most exciting crowds, and the most exciting talents I've ever seen? Absolutely. And I don't believe that's just a matter of opinion. I believe that is a matter of fact for a lot of people out there, not just me and not just people that live in the Southeast United States, but people all over the world. However, all right, I know all these things because, excuse me, because I was told these things. And here's what this means. Bear with me. Here's what this means. Ric Flair no matter who he was defending the title against, never ripped on his opponent. He could say things like, you're not on my level, brother, whatever it was. Uh, You're not a horseman. You'll never be as good as the horseman. But he always made a point to put over his opponent. He always made a point to say, you're one of the best in this company. And that means you're one of the best in the world. Why? Why? Because Jim Cocker Promotions is the best wrestling in the world. Remember? Because they told us. Okay, you see the connection? So when they told you these things, and then they brought the titles into it, they brought main event championship feuds into it, they kept the same continuity, okay? When Dusty Rhodes was facing a top heel, where that man was Tully Blanchard, or Ole, Ole or Iron, Iron Anderson, whatever. Uh, terrible. Uh, uh, he always put them over. He would do so with contempt, 
but he never said, Tully Blanchard, you're a waste of space. I hate you. You can't hack it here. You're not one of us. You're miserable. You're not very good. I can't stand you. All right? That never happened. Dusty would say things like, uh, you're one of the best in the world, brother. You're one of the best in the world. You're one of the best in this company. Saturday night's going to be a fight. I'm going to bring all I got. Okay? What do I mean by all this? I am tired. And I, I know there's differing opinions, and if you have them, that's fine. I am tired. Sick and tired, actually. I am sick and tired of every time I turn around that someone on AEW programming is bashing AEW. And we're not talking about outsiders, okay, for lack of a better term. We're not talking about, um, we're not talking about, um, um, you know, uh, uh, pundits online. We're not talking about anything like that. We're talking about contracted wrestlers and talent and personalities that exist in that company that are paid to be there. And every week without fail, you know, what happens? Someone comes on that TV and talks about how much this company sucks. I've had all I want to hear. I've had all I want to hear. And there's a reason I'm upset about this, okay? This outcast routine, Soraya and now Ruby Soho and Tony Storm, I'm sick of this. You know, it's possible to be heel and not go down that road because whether anyone cares about what little old Tom has to say about it or not, listen, I don't care. It's fine. Like I said, you can have your own opinions and it's good. We'll all get along in the end. No hard feelings, okay? And maybe no one else in the world cares about my opinion here, and that's fine too. But from where I'm sitting, you are doing nothing but devaluing your own product. The WWE Championship is the most prestigious championship in the world right now, and it has been for years. You want to know how I know? Because they told me. To main event WrestleMania is to main event the Showcase of the Immortals, the biggest night in the year for professional wrestling as a whole. That's the spot every person wants to be in that gets into the business, whether male or female, despite the weight class, despite the dreams, despite the talent level, that's where they want to be. And it's important. Do you want to know how I know? Because they tell me. Do you see where I'm coming from? When's the last time, with very few exceptions, kids, that someone in AEW has put over, this is the best wrestling in the world. This is the best wrestling you've ever seen. This championship I hold in my hand is the greatest championship in the entire professional wrestling industry, bar none. It is the prize. It is the prize, period, end of story. How often does it happen? Anybody have a number? Less than 10 times a month? Less than five? Less than three? It doesn't happen. Rarely does it ever happen. I'm sick of this. It is it is very, very feasible and very, very doable to put yourself over as a heel and not bash the company and bash the guy you're working. John Cena, I'm talking to you. Did you guys see that promo? Where Austin Theory barely got five words out of his mouth? And they all laughed along with Cena, ha, ha, ha. Austin Theory got made to, to sound and look like a schmuck. Now, he's going to win. He's going to beat John. Y'all know that, right? He's going to beat John. That's not it. What are we talking about? Because John's a stand-up guy. But who thought this was a good idea? Who thought this was a good idea? Number one, number one, by devaluing your opponent, you know what you've done? You've basically made the case that you have to win. Because, brother, if you don't win, you know what that means? You must not be very good because the guy that you're working, you say, is terrible. Doesn't deserve to be here. Can't lace your boots. He's horrible. He's not on your level. He's blah, 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 blah. Right? So when John loses this match, couldn't you just turn on him and say, John Cena's lost a step? Now, we all know that's not true. John is John. John will forever be John, but that's not the point. The point is you devalued 
the guy that you're working. He didn't give Austin Theory anything. He didn't do many favors by that promo, kids. You and I know that. And I don't care if you defend WWE despite what the owner did and still hasn't gone to trial for, has still not been arrested, will never see a day in court because he's sailed out of court. Okay? I don't care how much you worship that guy's feet and kiss the ground he walks on. You can't dispute the fact that that promo never needed to happen. It's silly. It's ridiculous, and it didn't need to happen. Cena could have looked him in the eye and said, Austin Theory, you're the future of this company. A lot of people say that you're a young John Cena. When I look at you, I see signs of who I was as a young man. But I've been there, and I've done that. And I've already, I already know how this plays out. And so because I've got the wisdom, because I got the experience, because I'm, I am who I am, I'm taking you down at WrestleMania. Easy promo. Easy promo. Ray says, Cena said, even if you beat him, it means nothing. He won't be able to talk Monday. So he basically made this match seem worth it. Thank you, Ray. This match means nothing. Why do you care? Listen, when John Cena and Austin Theory come on your TV for WrestleMania, get up and get your popcorn. Get up and have a beverage. Go walk your dog. Stir the chili. Prepare the nachos. Sit back and watch me. I'm more fun. Look how pretty I am. Are you kidding me? Come on, man. Don't waste your time watching this match. Because like Ray said, doesn't mean anything. Rebecca says, do you think it's because of the writers, Connor, the wrestlers? AEW doesn't have writers, Rebecca. There's no writers at all. These guys are booking their stuff. They're working with some agents. I'll call them agents slash producers backstage. There's no script writers in this company. Uh, and I have proper training from experienced people. They need to do better. Otherwise, they won't last. I don't believe this not lasting stuff. I want everybody to be, I want to be very clear when I say this. When I when I just went on that rant on AEW, I, notice I never said, if they don't stop, they're going to be having to close down. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Okay. But what I do believe is they should be portraying themselves as the greatest company in the world. And they should do so with following it up with all due respect to New Japan Pro Wrestling, all due respect to Impact. Those are fine companies, but this is where the action is. This is where the best talent in the world is. We're the company that came from absolutely zero. We went from zero to warp speed in the course of less than a year. And look where we are now. This is a go-to destination. This isn't a holdover while guys hope for better contracts somewhere else. This is a place where people want to sign. Because why? Because we have the best talent in the world and the best world championship. In fact, we've kind of got the only world championship. The only one that really means anything. But you don't know that, do you? Because you've not been told that. David Brasher, what's up, my friend? Got to bring your promo A game with Cena. Cena killed Roman. Roman better on the mic. Uh, well, see, here's the thing, Dave. Very glad you brought that up, Dave. Very glad you brought that up. Austin, lost my breath. Austin Theory can't come back. Want to know why? Because he was told don't. You know what I mean? You can spar in New Japan. You can spar in Impact, and you can spar in AEW. You're not sparring in WWE, baby. Austin Theory stands there and keeps his mouth shut. Do you want to know why? Because he was told to. There's no A game to be brought, brother. I, I respect what you're saying. I do. But there's no A game to be brought. And Theory can talk just fine. But you'd never know it because he didn't get to say anything Monday. And look, I love John. I've always loved John. I've always been a fan. I can't say always. I am. I have been a fan for a lot of years now, okay? And listen, when I wasn't really a fan, it was never against him as a man. I just never really cared for this, the gimmick that he ran. But it is what it is. Um, things change. It's fine. I, 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 I got a lot of respect for the guy. I really seriously do. So I'm not, it's not the end of the world, and I'm not hanging this on him and saying, John Cena ruined his reputation. I don't. No, 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 not at all. Everybody relax. I'm just saying, no, that promo didn't need to happen. It was absolutely ridiculous, and I didn't need to hear it. Sorry, Vic, I'll get back to you. I'm, I'm Marie says, facts is why I like Darby saying, hey, it is where I want to be. Bam! Did you notice when they mentioned, when MJF mentioned Sting's name, Darby scoffed and laughed? 
Everybody catch that? Now, what's that mean? What's it mean, Tom? I don't know. I'm just telling you I noticed it. You know what I mean? Uh, Vic says, uh, Rampage will air at 1130 Eastern. Yeah, it's going to be late, brother. What's up, Toby? How you doing, man? Good to see you. Rebecca says, even the refs announced teams are not as good as they used to be. All the, uh, They all used to tell a story. Now it's more of a scramble. To, all right, which company? Just overall? Hey, Marie. I missed your hello. You're so sweet. I love you as well. So good to see you. You're awesome. You know, you butter me up like that, you're going to get me to plug your show. No questions asked. Everybody go subscribe to Peaches and Power Bombs. Go check them out because they're awesome. Listen, listen, honey will get you everywhere with me, baby. I'm easily influenced, okay? I'm easily influenced, man. Believe that. <laughs> Look, you're stepping into my... <laughs> Come down here. Uh-huh. The boy's here, ladies and gentlemen. Ray says, seen the city. Yeah, I, Ray, I got your comment already, brother. Uh, Marie says, Austin Theory is amazing on his own. He was definitely told to hold back. Anyone who saw him on the Indies, Austin Theory was very good. I think you and I saw him in Indie shows too, didn't we? Ooh. Austin Theory. You may not remember yeah. who we're talking about. I've seen him somewhere. Uh, probably uh, uh, Evolve. Um. Evolve. We're going to talk about Forbidden Door 2, Vic. Hold tight on that. Look, he says, acknowledge the boy. Look, Jeff says the boy appears out of the shadows. Yes. True <laughs> question right there. What, where? Ray. Oh, does he like 21s? Mm -hmm. Do you? Do you? Mm -hmm. He says yes. Sandy in Germany says hi to the boy. Who you know in Germany? No Nobody. I do. Sandy. Sandy came on my show. All right, so look, we don't have to spend any more time on this, kids. I had to vent. I felt the need to go through this. And look, it, it's it's not going to ruin anything for me. It just really gets on my nerves. It seriously gets, I just can't stand it. There's just so much about that that just smells weird and smells bad, and I just don't understand why we're doing it. I just don't understand why we're doing it. If I came on this show every single week and told you that, you know what? I know you're watching this show, but that show over there is a whole lot better. And, buddy, I wish I was over there because this show, blah. Now, by the same token, I also don't sit here and tell you that this is the greatest podcast around because I don't believe that it is. However, I have to have faith in my ability. I have to believe that I know how to talk. I have to believe that I know how to engage with people and make a fun show. And I believe that I do that every chance I get. And some weeks are, are better than others. Some weeks I'm more in tune than others. All right. But I have to have faith in my ability here. I have to have faith in what I'm doing. And I do. And I enjoy what I'm doing. So to me, I have to tell you, uh, I have to tell you that, you know, in terms of the best pro wrestling podcast around, I certainly don't think I'm the worst. I've seen some of the worst. All right, someone just mentioned Ty of Valkyries. You like the subtle innuendo? Uh, someone just mentioned Ty of Valkyries All Elite. I'm going to say something. And and it's just going to be like, what? what's wrong with you? I respect her ability, and I'm totally fine with Ty of Valkyrie. If you ask me, Tom, is Ty of Valkyrie, in your estimation, a top 10 talent in the United States? I like her. I think she's, I think what well, she's done it all. She's been, uh, she's been everywhere really. I mean, she's done a lot of cool stuff. Um, is she in the top 10? Listen, that's not for me to say in my personal opinion, in my personal opinion. Okay. I've never really put her up on the pedestal that some others have. However, I like that she's in AEW. I hope that they keep her away from all this outcasts, you know, the, the other companies better than AEW nonsense I just spent 30 minutes ranting about, okay? But I'm totally fine that she's there. Totally fine that she's there, dude. No issue with it at all. I mean no disrespect, okay? And you know what? There's You know what's wrong with another top uh, female uh, wrestler in the women's division AEW? Nothing. And if anybody tells you that there is, they're dead wrong. 
This idea, this idea. Tom, all they do is fill up the locker room. Blah, 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 blah. I'm so sick of that. I'm sick of it. Do they have more than they can juggle, juggle at times? Sure, I'll admit to that. But does that mean they stop signing? No. No. I was going to make that cute, but I'm not going to. By the way, if you're listening to me after the fact, I just peaked your, I just peaked your, you know, blew your eardrums, as they say. No, I don't believe that. I believe you sign as many guys as you can afford to sign and women, and you keep them on your payroll. And when the time's right, you use them. I just don't believe in this. You know, we've seen a company fill up their locker room so the other company couldn't have them. Remember when AEW first opened, NXT filled up their locker room so the AEW couldn't sign the talent? What happened a year later, kids? Refresh your memory. Hit the reload button, if you will. You know what happened. They released a bunch of people because they couldn't hold them on there anymore, dude. They didn't have any room for them. I mean, they were trying to decrease payroll, so they did it. We don't see that with A-Dub, man. I'm not saying A-Dub, well, that's why they're better. I'm not saying, I'm just saying, if they couldn't handle it, then why are they doing it? They just, listen, they just relaunched the Ring of Honor brand. And I'm sorry, I don't care what anybody thinks. If you disagree, you completely come, come, disagree. It's fine. And I, I, I don't, it's, it's okay. I, I don't, it's fine. Totally fine. Okay. You and I'll be good if you disagree. I don't care. I don't think it, it should be buried. Don't bury the lead that Ring of Honor has been relaunched. Okay. The, 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 the Honor Club is back. That, that streaming service is back and it's dirt cheap. I don't think that's anything to sneeze at. They could have assimilated all that talent, sucked them up, got rid of the brand, got rid of the tiles, and said, ha, ha, by God. But they didn't. They didn't. Khan's got much love for the Ring of Honor brand, and I respect that. Does that mean that they're going to nail this? I don't know. I've enjoyed it so far, but we'll see what the future holds. We'll see what the future holds. Vic says Tony Khan made a horrible choice to have Jay Cargill have a squash match for a Canadian Open Challenge, then have Ty Valkyrie appear and said just having. I disagree with that, Vic, and here's why. I respect your opinion, my friend, but I will disagree with that, and here's why. If you have Ty Valkyrie come out and face her one on one, she has to beat her. And if they're not ready for that, then they're not ready for that. And number two, if the plan is for Ty to beat her, then it absolutely shouldn't happen on free live television. That's how I look at it. The only way it would have worked, it, the only way it would have worked is if she came out and they would have had a scuffle and the ref calls it a no contest or something. But Jay can't get counted out, right? Because she's not even lost via count out, has she? Or disqualification, right? Which means no losses is no losses, Correct which means you can't book that right now. I respect what you're saying, but that's kind of where that's kind of where I'm at with that. Marie says RH has been great. Uh, Marie, uh, let me just tell you, you had me a long time ago. Yeah, you had me a long time ago. You had me with love you, friend. Are you kidding me? You and I are good. Uh, Sugar Shane says the problem is we as an older generation... Grew up with the best wrestling ever. And this new generation of wrestling just can't compare to the NWA for me, Memphis wrestling, NWA. I, I believe, listen, I, I I won't argue with you. I love the old school stuff. But I, Shane, I'm not speaking for you. I also have to keep this in perspective. Because the, for me, the perspective is times change. Things either evolve or they de-evolve. And if you ask guys our age and older, they would say, oh, it's not the same anymore, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it's gone downhill and blah, blah, blah. And they're entitled to their opinion, brother. It's perfectly fine, so, as are you. But I try to move. I try to you know move and shake with the times, right? Um, I love what I watch today. I love pro wrestling. I've always loved it. And and you know, uh, do, does uh, an episode of AW Dynamite make me want to never watch Jim Crockett again? Of course not. Does it make me think? Well, there we go, Jim Crockett Part Two. Not at all. It's different. It's a different brand. New Japan. Puts me more in the mind of Crockett wrestling than anything I've ever seen in the modern era. Does that mean that it's better? Not at all.
But it, it's all subjective, man. Because here's what I'm telling you. Guys who grew up in the New York area and, and people who grew up around the world likely grew up with Vince McMahon's wrestling. So guess what they think the best wrestling in the world is? Not Crockett. Do you know what I mean? I respect what you're saying, and I won't disagree with 100% of what you're saying. However, for me, in my opinion, I love the new stuff, man. I do love it. I, I love, I enjoy AW. I enjoy Ring of Honor. I love me some New Japan. There's some WWE stuff that I can still watch. I think Cody's killing it. Um, I think Sami Zayn, the whole Bloodline storyline is effing phenomenal. I'm a big fan of that, okay? So I'm not going to sit here and say, because see, here's the thing. To everyone out there that believes that the Attitude Era was the best era in the history of wrestling, number one, I humbly submit that you're wrong. But, 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 I am very jaded and I'm very colored by my own, uh, by my own bias. And when did I grow up? I grew up during the Territory Era and I was a Jim Crockett fan. Still am. Okay. My opinion. And I know people that grew up during the Attitude Era who should be saying, that's your dearest, best wrestling of all time. And they don't. But there are other people that live and die by it. It's all subjective, man. Toby says, I like wrestling, tells a good story, doesn't matter where that is. I'm okay with that. Did you, uh, Chad Tubas says, you see where MLW is now on TV. Uh, dude, MLW is a little promotion that could. The only issue, I don't want to say issue, but the only thing that I would, I would wonder out loud about Major League Wrestling is this. If they really start to make some waves, and and people in the business know who they are, that's not even that's not even a question. People in the business know who they are. Okay, let's be real. But if they were to make some waves, then do they make enough waves that AW says, "Ooh, I like that guy. Ooh, I like her," and W says, "Just take them all, pal." I don't know. And then next thing you know, no more MLW. I don't know the answer to that. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just throwing it out there. Vic says, I grew up both WWF and the NWA, and the best for me was the WA. Same here. Listen, I, dude, I don't, Vic, I don't know where you are in the world. You don't have to tell me, but I'm a North Carolina baby. And so when I was a kid growing up, it was Crockett or nothing. And WWF was on my TV. And when Ric Flair and Dusty Rose talked about the paper champion up north, I knew who they were talking about. You kidding me? We all knew. Me and my buddies all knew, man. And sometimes I would flip the channel. And I remember when Steamboat went to WWF and they gave him the great big headdress and he was breathing fire. And it actually made me cry a little bit because I thought, what's this? Roddy Piper, same thing. And I love Roddy. Don't get me wrong. But the Roddy Piper that had his that had Piper's pit and was over the top and was at times cartoony and became a cartoon character in an animated series and became a wrestling buddy, a wrestling doll, action figure, whatever. That wasn't the Roddy Piper I knew. Greg Valentine? Wasn't the Greg Valentine I knew. And guess what? No one fought anybody for going to WWE. Not even today. WWE pays very well, okay? So don't anybody fault a talent for going to that company. When Cody went back, the first thing out of my mouth was, as long as they don't put him in polka dots. Well, so far they haven't, so we're good, right? I don't fault anyone for going to, going to the company that's going to be better suited for them their family, and their future. I'm totally fine with it. Brino in the house. Brino, I've been cutting so many promos in the past 36 minutes, I about can't talk, brother. But I'm doing what I can. Ray says the outcasts, in my opinion, are terrible. Ruby talked about her getting booed in Vegas. I was there, so she's right, but that angle is trash. Yeah, I'm just not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of people saying they're over Jade. I mean, I, I you know... As with Undertaker's streak, um, as with Goldberg's streak, when you do the streak, regardless of the streak, you are backing yourself into a corner because eventually, eventually, the streak has to end. Do you want to know why? Everything's going to end. One day I will shuffle off this mortal coil and so will all of you. And nobody wants to hear that, but it's true. The main event's going to end at some point. I don't, I, I don't want it to, but it's going to. I don't know when, but it will. WWE will not be here forever. One day that company will be done. 
You want to know how I know? Because everything ends. Everything ends. This moment of uh, of uh, hopelessness brought to you by Tom Clark's main event. Jeez. I'm not giving you much to look forward to this weekend, am I? Vic says he's in Miami. Miami's hot, brother. Woo. Florida's too hot for me. Shane says, I understand what you're saying. I love A-Day, but I go to sleep watching Raw. The Raw used to be great, but to be honest, how many Street Profits matches can you watch? And you know what? That sounds like you're throwing heat at Street Profits, and I don't believe that you are. I kind of see where you're coming from, and I love Street Profits. I'm sure you're a fan. But, like, it's a fair point because when they get into a rut, they run the same match. And, you know, people say, you know, these two guys in AW only wrestle one time and blah, 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 never happened again, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but the other company runs the same feud for six weeks straight. Look, it's all in what you want to watch, man. It's all in what makes you happy. Uh, Jeff says, Oscar streak ended against Charlotte, which you kind of thought would happen. Yeah, good point. Everybody's streak ends. Can't beat Goldberg, won't be special afterwards. And and Brino, to your point, Kevin Nash had no, had no business beating Goldberg. Never should have happened. I bet Nash would say that. Well, Nash wouldn't say that. Never mind. <laughs> I'll bet he wouldn't say that. I bet he hasn't said that. Um, you know, at the time, at the time, what was being said was, well, Tom, you don't understand, brother, because Kevin Nash was red hot at that time. No one's harder than Goldberg. And I know because I watched at that time. I watched every Monday night. Never missed a, never missed a show, Raw or Nitro. Nothing was bigger than Goldberg. Kevin was hot. Don't misunderstand me. Kevin was very, very hot. Okay. But Goldberg hot, it's a difference. It's a difference. So how should you have ended it? I don't know. Would his pop eventually start wearing down? Perhaps. But you find a way to do it. But, you know, that's the problem. Because the end of a streak is never going to be what people want it to be. Right? It's never going to be what people want it to be because the company has put in so much time and effort to elevate it to the point that they have. It's the truth. All right, let's get to the rest of this news here. we got 20 minutes till we take this thing home. AEW has announced Forbidden Door 2 as part of their summer Canadian tour. They're going to visit several new markets with Dynamite, Rampage, and a house show. Their second ever cross-promoted pay-per-view will take place, as was told earlier, Sunday, June 25th a date that has been identified a long time ago. Uh, but there we go. That's that's the news we have for you. That's all we got for you. Um, it's going to be in Canada. I'm not going to Canada for this show. Uh, we'll see what happens. Are you guys excited? What do you think is going to happen? What's your thoughts on it? What do you think everyone has to be? Uh, what's everyone in for? What do you think they're going to try to do? I'm curious what everybody thinks here. Um, as part of this... Um, AW talk. I'm sure if you watch the Ring of Honor show, then you saw Wheeler Yuta challenge Katsuyori Shibata. I'm here for that. If Katsuyori Shibata were in the United States full time and wanted to wrestle full time, that's who you give the Blackpool Combat Combat Club to. It's Katsuyori Shibata. I said it. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. I'm sorry. That's how I feel. I think that's how you give that that little faction to. Now, I don't know how they would feel about that, but I love me some Shibata. I've been a Shibata fan for years, baby. Kidding me? Chad Too Bad says, I got a good question for you. Uh-oh. Uh, if Goldberg had beat Nash, who do you think would have ended the streak? It's so hard to say because he'd run through everyone. He'd run through everyone. If you really wanted to, if you really, if you got to the point where you're like, that's it, we've got to end this streak. Either Bill's hurt or he's tired, or you know what I'm saying, or something, then what you do is you just have the NWO steal it from him. And I don't mean Nash. I mean Hogan. You have Hogan flat out steal it from him with a whole lot of help. And you make it so blatantly obvious. So the next week he's bragging about how he pinned him with no help, and it's all BS, and we're all going, oh, you still it. And then when Goldberg's rested and he comes back and say four weeks, he trashes all 89 members of the NWO at that point leaves him for dead, and we get the rematch of Goldberg versus Hogan. Goldberg wins again, and he wins the best of the three-match series. That would have been how I would have done it. 
However, however, they're still perfecting the technology for the Wayback Machine. What I've been told is they're looking for a specific cog and sprocket. And once they have those items, Tom will take his dog and he'll jump into the Wayback and see if we can fix some of this warp pro wrestling history because I've had enough of it. Jeff says, man, Shibata and Yuta, I would definitely eat. Dude, that's going to be so fun to watch. So fun to watch. Vic says, Booker T. Interesting choice. Bret Hart, maybe, had he not been injured accidentally by Goldberg. Yeah, dude, Goldberg pretty much trashed Bret's career at that point. I was going to say Flux Capacitor, Jeff. I was going to say it, and I thought, nah, I'm not going to do it. I don't want to go. I, I don't want to go the typical route. But you had it. That's fine. It's good. Shane says Forbidden Door will be great if Will Ospreay is on the card. I love me some Will Ospreay. I don't much care for Will Ospreay the person, but Will Ospreay the talent's phenomenal. Uh, Sandy says you can't change the past. Sandy, when I get the Wayback Machine, we'll find out, won't we? You'll see. Miss Lopez is here. I haven't seen you in a in a month of Sundays. Goldberg versus Braun Breaker. No. Yeah. How are you feeling about that Breaker kid? Be honest with you. Myth me. Just as in my opinion, that was the worst way to end a streak. A lot of politics behind the scenes, I think, played into that. I 100% agree. He says Big Show is bigger than Goldberg. I disagree with that. I love Big Show, but he's not bigger than Goldberg. Toby says, now that Tom has depressed me, I must say goodbye. <laughs> Toby, thanks for hanging out, brother. Come back when you can stay longer. I don't dislike Braun. I'm fine with him. I just wonder, I just wanted to read the temperature of the room. Ray says uh Mello needs to pin Braun. Mello is money. Mello is very good. Bigger is in taller. Yeah, well, Big Show is taller than everybody except like he's even taller than Shaq, right? Butch name gone back to original. Well, we all have only wanted it for five years or however the heck long it's been. Vic says, I got a great question for you. Since AEW still working with New Japan, do you think there's no way JY can sign with AEW? JY can do whatever he wants to do. No, nothing will, will preclude him from signing with AEW if it's what he wants to do. I don't know what's going on at the moment with him, dude. Your guess is as good as mine, to be honest with you. There's only one more thing I had on the docket for this week. Specifically, the great Muda is headed to the WWE Hall of Fame. Now, you guys and gals know how I feel about this Hall of Fame business. Um, I'm okay with it. Um, they've put in anybody and everybody into this particular Hall of Fame. I don't lose any sleep over it. I've debated before. I've written opinions bef in the past. I've talked about it. Um, I've voiced my objections or my love of cho certain choices. And at the end of the day, when the dust settles and the smoke clears, as they say, the WWE Hall of Fame is not actually real. I hate to break it to you. Spoiler alert, it's not a real thing. The WWE Hall of Fame has historically always been decided by one dude, and that's Vince McMahon. And he could have a bunch of his yes guys telling him who they think should get in, but at the end of the day, it was only his decision. Now, I don't know who's calling it now. I guess it's Hunter and whoever, but it's not a, it's not a you know, like, listen, for better or worse, like Baseball Hall of Fame, Basketball Hall of Fame, this is not voted on by sports writers. This is not decided by owners. This is not decided by even the fans. This is one to two guys, maybe just one. Now, I didn't say it's not important. I didn't say it means nothing to the guys and gals that are in it because it does to a whole lot of them. What I'm telling you, and I've always told you, and I will always tell you, in my humble opinion, while it's nice PR and the rings look pretty sweet and a lot of those talents wear those rings to the end and they never take them off. And you know what? They should be proud of that. I would look at it more of as a pride, an aspect of pride to be recognized with your colleagues than I would call it a Hall of Fame. Now you're asking me what's the difference. In my opinion, when the fans make decisions, that to me is what matters the most when the fans decide. But that's just my take. 
No one has to agree with that. That's just what I'm where I'm coming from. If they were to open this up to a multiple choice fan vote, if it were, and see, here's the problem. If you run anything online, there's a way to manipulate the votes, right? I mean, anybody can manipulate anything. You could do a write-in vote, write in Donald Duck if you wanted to, and there'd be 87 million votes for Donald Duck to be in the Hall of Fame, right? So, I mean, anything could be, be manipulated. But if there were a way to do it when the fan, if the fans could have an actual shot, how about all the, the top pro wrestling writers in the industry today? You know what I mean? How about even including the guys at Sports Illustrated that cover pro wrestling, at the national publications that cover pro wrestling? Um, how about just the fans? I'm just throwing it out there. But you know why none of that matters? It's not Tom's Hall of Fame. It's the WWE Hall of Fame. And they do with it as they wish. They do with it as they wish. Having said all that for the past 20 minutes straight, I'm a big, big fan of Muda. KG Muda, in other words. I love this guy to death. He scared the life out of me when I was a kid because of the face. Well, I should say Kabuki scared the life of me when I was a kid because that dude was creepy. But the great Muda was phenomenal athlete. Going to be inducted by Ric Flair. Excellent move. Great choice. Um, I love uh, I love the great Muda. Chris is my guy. Are you kidding me? Me and Chris go way back. We've written on sites together. Chris has got me a two, three different jobs over the years. Chris is awesome. Everybody go support Pancakes and Power Slams. The Hall of Fame is appreciation night. I'm leaving that up. I couldn't have said it better. The Hall of Fame is an appreciation night. It's a way to say thank you. That's what it is. It's nice. Jeff's kiss, Sandy. Um, it's fantastic. It's the best way. To say, I can't put any better. It's a, it's a, it's a way to show appreciation. It's a way for men and women to get on a stage in front of their peers and in front of the fans and say, I love you with a tear in my eye. I love you guys. You mean the world to me. I couldn't have done this without you. I love my wife, love my husband, love whoever. Yeah. That's what it's there for. Well said. Well said. Wilf's very late. Wilf, you're 50 minutes late. What'd you think of my hometown? Um, I thought the shows were good. Uh, show was good. I, I enjoyed it. I mean, you know, I, I ran to, you have to go back and watch the replay, Wilf, once, once it, we're done here. Go back and watch the top of the hour because, you know, I ranted about some things that I have, uh, I have to take issues with. Remind me to have coffee next time. My throat is wrecked. My throat is wrecked. Well, kids, we got 10 minutes till we're taking this thing home. That means we're opening the floor. This is your chance, Ray. You're up to bat. Ray's up to bat. Scott Ray. Ray's ready. Watch this. Three, two, one. He didn't tell me. I know. Chris Cross or Rex in Effect? Rex in Effect. Part two, run DMC or Eric B and Rakeem. I got to go run DMC because without them, we don't have Eric. Mm. I was going to say we don't have Eric B and Rakeem without run DMC. I'm going to stick to that. If Adam Cole came to your house and invited you and your family to play top golf and you could bring your friend, could I come? Yes. Later wanted to see coffee and a tasty bowl of pudding. Could I have <laughs> Wanted to see coffee and a ta have coffee maybe and a tasty bowl of pudding. Have you ever had a bowl of pudding that wasn't tasty? Rice pudding, perhaps. I'm not eating that crap. Uh, absolutely, Ray. All the time. All the time. Uh, I enjoyed the I enjoyed the AEW in Winnipeg for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Chad says, "Aw, kind of my neck of the woods. Next next week they're in Missouri. Nice, nice." Rob says, "Here it comes. You've been waiting for it. Who's your Mount Rushmore of tag teams that started as tag teams, split and did well as singles?" Dude, that might be tough. That might be tougher than you think. That might be tougher than you think. Split as start as a tag team, split and did well as singles. Um, 
Didn't Flair and Valentine start out as a tag team? Um, I'll say the Blade Runners. Okay, you guys know who the Blade Runners are. Uh, that's um, Sting and Rock, right? Sting and Rock. That was Sting and the Ultimate Warrior. I say both those guys did pretty well and made some money in the business, yes? Um, skyscrapers, Vic says. Yeah, I mean, if we're talking Stardust tag team, who are we talking about, though? Which version of the Skyscrapers? Are we saying uh, Mark Calloway and... Uh, Oh God, remind me. It was it was Mark Calloway. Didn't Mark Calloway wasn't did, wasn't he replaced by Dan Spivey or was he with Dan Spivey? Oh, it's it's making me nuts. It's making me nuts. Who else was in the skyscrapers? I think Spivey replaced Calloway, didn't he? Or was with he was he with him? Someone looked that up. I don't have to Wikipedia it. I don't feel like it. You guys do the work for me. Who was in the skyscrapers? Dan Spivey, Mark Calloway, Sid Vicious was a skyscraper, right? Am I wrong on that? But Sid didn't start out in that tag team. Sid was wrestling already. Mark Calloway was wrestling already, so he didn't start out a skyscraper. Mark replaced Sid, replaced Sid Vicious. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Sid Vicious didn't start out as a skyscraper. Sid Vicious was already working. Um... Sid Vicious was Lord Humongous. Anybody remember that? Can't say Marty and Sean, Chad. I would say Marty and Sean. Sean did okay. Or excuse me. Marty did okay. Um, long term, if we're talking long term, Marty did not do okay. Mean Mark and Dan Spivey. Okay. Hardy Boys. Sheree, I think you just won the whole effing show. Well done. Start as a tag team. Split and had great runs as singles. Absolutely. Absolutely the Hardy Boys. 100%. Started as a tag. If that's the quantification here, it started as a tag team, that's exactly what happened. The Vacity Club. But they didn't start as tag team. If, if, if I'm being technical here, kids, and tell me if I'm being too technical, they didn't start as a tag team. Mike Rotunda was already a wrestler. Um, um, uh, um, Rick Steiner was already, was already a wrestler. Yeah, he was. And, um, of course, Dr. Dead Steve Williams was already a wrestler. Edge and Christian. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Does the shield count? No. No, because they all three, with the exception of well, the exception of Roman, Tyler Black, and uh, John Moxley were both established professional wrestlers before they got to Florida and changed their names and became the Shield. Heart Foundation, uh, Jim the Anvil, though. I get, I mean, Jim had a career, but it didn't do. He did okay. Would I say he did very well? Eh. Hollywood Blondes, good answer. But they didn't start out as Hollywood Blondes. Ho! Because Steve Austin started off in Texas. Went from Texas to Mid-South. Or Mid-South to Texas. Texas to Mid-South. And they ended up in WCW. Young Bucks. Ah, but they never really split, did they? They never really split, did they? (laughs) Ray says, Tom Clark and me. Vic says, no, because Booker T was the only one to continue his career. His brother retired. That's fair. That's fair. Three minutes, kids, and Tom's going to have to scoot. Going to have to scoot. So what do we got? Three minutes. We've got three minutes. Anybody remember that gimmick? Three-minute warning? The Road Warriors. Now nah, I can't count the Road Warriors, man, because Hawk and Animal didn't really... No, nah, I can't count them. They were always known as Road Warriors. You know what I mean? I mean, Animal came back, and, did, and I'm going to be honest with you. After Hawk died, I didn't care for anything Animal did in WWE. I was not a fan. I was happy he got work. I was happy that he was getting a paycheck, and it was I was really happy for him, to be honest with you. Not that he – it wasn't a charity case by any means, but I was happy they were giving him a shot, and they were letting him have – they were putting him on TV. He was working all the time. 
I just didn't care for anything he did. For me, it just wasn't the same. Well, no disrespect to Animal. I love Animal. Um, I've not heard anything about Miro coming back, Chad. We'll see. When will Orange lose? He's Orange. No, he's not. I get what you're saying, but dude, he's lost before. But how do you build a star, Ray? How do you build a star, Ray? How do you build a star? You put him over. Put him over. It doesn't mean they never lose. It means they win more than they ever lose, right? It's the only way you build stars. There's no other way to do it. You can do a combination of things. You can you can give him a great valet. You can give him a great speaking, like a mouthpiece as a manager. You can put him on TV every week and give him cool gear, cool music, cool finishing moves. They can both be very good together in the ring. But if they don't win, nobody cares. Right? AEW knows how to build a star. For all, all the ranting I did earlier, they know how to build a star. They've done it. They did it. Orange Cassidy's never should have worked. Never should have worked. I wasn't a fan. I am now. Because I see. You know what I mean? And they they presented him in the right way, and they still are. Orange has been presented as, he's playing mind games. He's playing mind games. He's messing with them, and it's perfect. Because once you explain that, it's it's you fix the problem. For me. It's this thing where it's like, the Undertaker's an undead mortician, and he can... He just turned the lights off with his powers and he brought down lightning because he's powerful. But the moment they started saying on commentary, oh, the intimidation factor that comes along with Undertaker is huge. And they started telling you flat out, yeah, he's he knows what he's doing. He's messing with people, right? Then it explains it. And then I'm good. I'm on board. But I just, as much as I'm a comic book guy, Sometimes I, I have to be not told, but I have to be reminded. No, no. This is part of his appeal. This is part of why he's successful, why he never loses, is because he's totally gotten to your head before you ever got in the ring, before you even got on the, on the plane that morning to go to the arena, before he ever used the bathroom that morning, he's in your head. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Sharice says, oh my God, we had so much fun at Dynamite. There you go. Got on TV twice. Remember the night that Becky, was it Becky and Sasha were fighting up the steps in Charlotte? We were on there and Wesley, my kid, was waving at the TV. Do you remember who was the manager of the skyscrapers and Doom? It was Teddy Long, wasn't it? I know woman managed Doom for a time, right? Was it woman or Teddy Long? I think it was Teddy. Eddie Gilbert and Tommy Rich, although Jackie Fargo put them together as the fabulous ones. They tagged before that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, it's hard, isn't it? Robbie got us on that one, dude. All right, kids. There you go, Vic. Nailed it. All right, folks, that's going to do it for us. I got to go. Got to uh, uh, hit the ground running. Got to get on up out of here. I ain't got to go home, but I got to get the heck up out of here. Um, we got to thank everybody for stopping by today for hanging out. I very much appreciate you. Thanks everybody for being there. Thanks for, uh, watching this week. Thanks for supporting the show it means loads to me. Thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing. I want to remind you about Tom Clark's six M podcast. We focus on movies, music, Marvel magazines, miniseries, and more. This past week, we just put out the uh, Cody Rhodes episode, Go check it out. Um, uh, Phil Lindsay and I, Phil from Bleacher Report, Grapsity, and the 6M co-hosting chair came back and uh, we did uh, Cody Rose. Fun episode. Go check it out. You're all wrestling fans, right? I think you'll love it. Uh, it. It was really fun to do, actually. So go check out that episode. Subscribe to the 6M and the main event on all the major podcast platforms. And the minute new episodes become available, they will upload to the device of your choosing. And remember, you get access to all the archives. I never charge a penny for any of my content. Nothing's behind a paywall. If you want merch, you can look at the bottom of the screen and order you some merch. No pressure. Do what you want. Um, I love doing this. I do this because it's a labor of love. I love pro wrestling, and I love talking to you guys and hanging out. So that's why I'm doing it. So thanks again, everybody. Thanks for being there. We appreciate you. Everybody have the best weekend. We'll talk to you next week, all right? See you soon. Thanks,
Main Event. <laughs>